In this chapter, we will explore the topic of inventory management and risk pooling. Um, if you think of any supply chain that's moving goods from initial suppliers all the way down to consumers, at the various stages during that supply chain, you will find levels of inventory being carried. Um, the manufacturer, for example, at one stage will carry inventory. The wholesalers will carry inventory. The distributors will carry inventory. The retailers will carry inventory. And because inventory costs, all of that contributes to the overall cost in the supply chain. So as a result, it's very important that we manage inventory effectively. And there are several factors that affect how inventory costs actually manifest themselves. And so we're going to explore some of these ideas in this particular chapter. Um, so why is inventory important? There are several reasons why inventory is important. Um, for one, you want to you could use inventory as an opportunity to hedge against prices. Uh, so if, um, if, if there is a belief that the price of a particular item or raw material or a finished product will actually change, then if there's the opportunity to, st um, to store uh, large amounts of inventory as a way of actually achieving some savings, particularly for an item that has a fair amount of velocity that is, that is that the item is being used quite a bit, then it would be a good idea to actually stock inventory. Um, inventory also sometimes provides an opportunity to decouple production and distribution. So for example, if a distribution center holds inventory, if there's a problem at the manufacturing plant, then you could still satisfy demand up to a point. If the shutdown at the plant is fairly long, then maybe you might run the risk of running out of inventory. However, if it is a sort of a, a short-term situation at the plant, the inventory that is available at a distribution center or at a warehouse can certainly help with uh, mitigating against the potential risk of a stockout because of that shutdown at the plant. And, and so there are just many ways in which we could store inventory. And the, other, the other example is working process inventory. If you're producing a final product that is made up of uh, some subcomponents, then in the, at the production facility it's possible to have inventory of uh, those subcomponents waiting to be assembled. And so you call that working process inventory. So there are all kinds. All right. So if we look at um, this particular slide, we see here that manufacturing inventories can be quite high. And if you look at the change between 1992 and 2006, uh, total U.S. manufacturing inventories uh, in the order of trillions of dollars, $1.3 trillion. Um, also, just to give you a sense of inventory to sales ratios, um, you could see 1.56 in 1992, but 1.25 in 2006. So we've been able to bring down the level of inventories relative to sales. Uh, however, that issue is still pretty much um, a major concern. Um, if you think about the some of the companies that we know, for example, GM's production and distribution network has many supplier plants. Each of these plants will carry inventory. Um, you have 133 parts plants, so 31 assembly plants, 11,000 dealers, all these individuals in the network carry inventory. And because there's a cost associated with inventory, then one has to be concerned about how do you actually reduce that cost. But to do so, it means that we must understand the factors that actually drive inventory. Uh, if you think of free transportation, uh, that's another example here where we typically are carrying inventories uh, in a pipeline from one point to the next, $4.1 billion. GM's inventory is by at $7.4 billion. So it's important that we find ways to reduce the cost associated with inventory. If, sorry, of in inventory. Uh, it's important for us to find that, all right? There are some ways to do that. Is For example, you could actually reduce the size of shipments if you can, um, and you could actually cut costs by up to about 26%. If you could change the routes, the transportation routes, the logistic routes, you might find efficiencies that could actually lead to significant savings as well. 
So we'll explore some of these strategies a little bit later. So what's driving the need for inventory? Uh, so you can see that if we have uncertainty in customer demand, well, one of the ways to ensure that you provide a certain service level is to stock inventory. And that way you can hedge against that uncertainty. Um, nowadays, we start to see products having short life cycles. Because they're short, the life cycles tend to be short, it's hard for us to have enough of an opportunity for us to learn and understand a demand pattern. And so we make a lot of mistakes in the early stages in terms of forecasting demand. And before you know it, we left with a bunch of product that has gone obsolete because the product life cycles are so short. Cell phones, for example, would be a great, you know, the life cycle of a cell phone probably is about one to two years. Now, some people might keep it longer than that, but there's usually a replacement uh, that shows up, another version in a very short period of time. So you will tend to find in an environment like that, it will be difficult to really forecast demand accurately and therefore manage inventory effectively. All right. Uncertainty in demand, but also uncertainty in supplies can actually cause uh, issues. If you have delivery lead times that are uncertain, that creates problems. And um, in some cases, on the supply side, if a manufacturer, as an example, wants to optimize the utilization of their production facility, there might be an incentive for them to produce large lot sizes, big production runs. But what happens now is that while you're producing these big production runs, the question is, is the demand actually there? You're optimizing the utilization of the plant, but are you matching your production with demand? And so those things also help to increase costs in the supply chain if there is a sort of mismatch between your supply and your demand. So holding the right amount of inventory at the right time, at the right place in the supply chain, is usually a fairly difficult uh, issue, a complex issue to deal with. There are mathematical models for assisting, but certainly it is not a trivial problem. Uh, we see some examples here where Dell's computers was actually sharply off the forecast, and as a result, the company had to do some write downs. Um, just last year in uh, 2000 and I believe it was 10, 2011, in terms of the Christmas season, um, BlackBerry really forecasted poorly the potential sales of its playbook. And because it had stockpiles of inventory, you had a situation where the company had to really lower the price of the costs, had to do a lot of write downs of that product. Of course, they were able to move some of the inventory, uh, the inventory as a result, but just think of the loss uh, in terms of the expected profit. So that's an issue. Um, Liz Claiborne's hired and anticipated excess inventories uh, in 1993. So that, that caused some sort of a earnings decline. IBM's ineffective inventory management in 1994. Shortages of the ThinkPad line. Um, just imagine Apple, when it brings out a new product, if it does not forecast the demand for the iPad 3 were enough, or if it's going to introduce an iPhone 6, then that could actually be uh, quite catastrophic. All right. And Cisco, we see, has declining sales. As a result of declining sales, you have fairly large levels of inventory uh, left over. Um, in terms of looking at the demand side, so let's see what are some of the issues that uh, are present on the sort of demand side of things. So uncertainty, of course, in demand, we're not we're talking about the demand for, uh, name it, um, building materials or automobiles, cell phones, computers, whatever those goods are. That is a critical factor in terms of driving um, how, how you manage inventory or how effective you can be with your inventory management decisions. We typically have to make two decisions. One is what do you want to order and when to actually place an order. So we have to determine what is the optimal order quantity. 
and the optimal what we call reorder point that is the point at which your inventory level which is a, a particular point uh, demarcation and then you trigger an order from your suppliers all right so we call that really establishing an inventory policy in terms of how much to order and when to actually place that order um, for us to make those decisions we need some information critical information usually we need to know customer demand the customer demand if the, if customers demands are large we will typically place larger orders if customers demands are small we'll obviously place small orders as well um, the replenishment lead time how long does it actually take to get the product well if it takes a fairly long time to get that product chances are we will want to ensure that we have a fair amount of inventory available when we place that order for a shipment all right so if the lead time is short if the lead time is one day then all you need is one day of supply to carry you over to tie you over while you're waiting to receive your shipment if it is two weeks then you need two weeks of supply so obviously your reorder point would be much larger if the lead time is longer all right in making the inventory decisions, a number of different types of products um, will complicate things because in some cases, uh, these products actually share uh, containers. And then if, you, if you're if you going to just order a single container and you have multiple products that you want to order for, if your optimum quantities of all these products exceed your total capacity of your container, then you have to figure out a way of of sort of adjusting the optimal quantities to fit that container load while optimizing the cost at the same time. All right. So some of the costs involved, if you're going to place an order, uh, there's usually what we call an ordering cost. There's a cost associated with the product itself, is your purchase cost or manufacturing cost. There's transportation as often involved. On the inventory carrying side, we usually have the capital that's tied up in the inventory itself, which leads to opportunity costs. Obsolescence, uh, the part could go obsolete while we have it in the inventory. Maintenance, um, taxes, insurance, property taxes. Also, we tend to think about the risk of, of pilferage, breakage. All of those things are factored into the cost of carrying inventory. So when you have an inventory item in your warehouse, there's a risk associated with keeping that there. And then the service level requirements. Um, and when we speak of service level, what we're talking about is your ability to meet the demand when it actually occurs. And if you have high service levels, then you have to keep high levels of inventory to meet those service levels. Otherwise, you run out of stock. Now, in terms of making the decision of how much to order, there's this concept called single stage control, inventory control. That is um, really at some one point in the network, you make a decision um, concerning the amount to order. And that information is shared by the various stages or phases within the supply chain. So a single supply uh, chain stage could be that um, the decision is made at the retailer, the decision is made at the distributor, etc. And so here are some techniques that uh, we consider. One that's very common, very popular is the economic lot size model. And uh, for people who've done cost accounting um, or if you've done production operations management before this course, then you would have come across the economic lot size model. Uh, demand uncertainty and how we handle that and in a case like that we're usually talking about um, basically adjusting uh, your not just your order quantities but also when you actually place the order your safety stock levels and that has issue that has uh, something to do with um, ensuring that during the lead time when you place an order that you have enough stock to meet the uncertainty in demand Single period models are quite interesting. They're probabilistic models in the sense that there's some risk or some probability associated with a given level of demand. And when you make that single decision, then you could either have too much or you could either produce too much or too little. 
and so there's that risk of either being overstock or understock. Uh, a very good example of that occurs in terms of the travel industry um, or the car rental industry. So if you think of the seats on a plane as inventory, um, you have to decide, uh, since the demand is uncertain, um, the inventory basically is the inventory at different fares. So how many seats uh, should be, if you think of a Canada system, how many seats uh, should be uh, priced at uh, Tango, how many seats should be priced at Tango Plus, how many seats should be priced at uh, Leisure, and so on. And so the inventory level at each of those is a factor that has to be considered, and that depends on the demand for seats. If you have few people wanting to pay the price of Leisure, but you've allocated too many seats to that, it's possible that that flight could leave without actually selling off all those seats. And that's why the airlines actually play around with shifting the amount of inventory in the different price categories as they get closer and closer to the flight. Why? Because there's only one opportunity. That demand occurs only once. And once that flight is gone, there's nothing you could do about the rest of the seats on that flight, okay? Initial inventory um, basically has implications for whether or not, you know, how much you need to produce, of course, because if you have a particular demand, um, your initial inventory can help to offset some of that demand, and it uh, then determines what you need to produce. And if those quantities that you need to produce are small because you've offset most of the demand, then there may be cases where it may not make any sense to do any production at all because the fixed costs associated with producing um, that small quantity might outweigh the profit that you will gain from that additional amount. So sometimes it doesn't always make sense. Multiple order opportunities, basically uh, we speak of the sort of um, continuous review and periodic review types of inventory models where we say continuous review, we are monitoring inventory levels and then placing orders based on the level of inventory in stock. Okay, in other words, when we get to the reorder point, we will place uh, an order. So that kind of model, uh, model has to be uh, considered in this case. But then we also have what we call periodic review models as well. Um, and then, of course, lead times can be variable, and then we get into the periodic review policy, which we'll explore a little later on, and then if we want to optimize for service level. So all of these kinds of decisions um, and techniques have, can be used in managing the supply chain. Okay. So we will stop at this point, and in our second part, our second video, we will explore the economic lot size model.